Hey friends, welcome to Yoga and Podcasts. This show explores how yoga can cross over into daily life. Join your host, me, Ashley Weber, bi-monthly as I interview mind-body luminaries worldwide, as well as a sprinkling here and there of my own solo episodes, as I do have a lot to share as well. So sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode, y'all. Joining us on today's episode is physical therapist and owner of Out Wellness, Sid Young. Welcome, Sid. Thank you for being on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. Super stoked to be here. Yeah. Uh, We're just going to jump right in. Would you care to share with us who you are and what you're about in this world of physical therapy and Out Wellness? Man, that's a loaded question. Um, Yeah, so (laughs) I've been a physical therapist since 2020. Um, I my first two years out, I did a residency and a fellowship um, at like a big orthopedic clinic mm-hmm. um, and just kind of wanted to serve my community in a more meaningful way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's what drove me to start my, my own business. That was about three years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, and so now I just am really passionate about creating a safe space for queer folks to um assess and get better at their health and wellness goals and um yeah it's been really fun that's awesome yeah yeah so could you share a little more about more in depth about what inspired you to create out wellness like more in depth yeah so i mean i'm a queer person Mm -hmm. um so i think first and foremost my lived experience as a patient in these health and wellness spaces Mm -hmm. and i have the privilege of presenting as a cis white woman and so I can not disclose parts of my queerness at times where it feels unsafe for me and I know a lot of my queer family can't doesn't have that doesn't have that privilege and I just you know I was feeling like a lot of the time I felt unsafe um, or like I would get worse care if I were to disclose some of that information and um yeah, so that's really kind of what drove me to initially do it. And now, like, it's maybe even a little bit greater than that in saying, like, all marginalized people have a similar experience where, like, my passion is for the queer community because mm-hmm. that's my family and, you know, mm-hmm. that's kind of where my passion lies. But cis women have that experience. People of color have that experience. Like, there, anybody who is not a cis white man has that experience yes. and... um so yeah, I, I wanna I wanna build this out to be like um, physical disability people with physical disabilities, you know, all types of people who don't fit into this mold, um, mm-hmm. kind of see themselves in this space and feel like they can come to this space and have an affirming experience that mm. they might not have had before. Mm, that's awesome. That's so needed in the world, and I can completely relate to what you're what you're speaking to. Um, okay, so yoga culture has an emphasis on community. Could you elaborate elaborate even in deeper detail on what type of community you are attracting and cultivating with out wellness? Community is the center point of what we do, really. Like, um, you know, physical therapy and training maybe don't they're not the most fun things to always do, right? Like yeah. people aren't like I am so excited to go to physical therapy today. So, uh-huh. and, and I get that, and you know, it just kind of is what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but people show up for community, and um, I'm really proud of kind of what we're building and what we've already built, mm-hmm. um, especially in the in the transgender space. And so we kind of um, hunkered down on our trans chosen family because of all of the legislation that has come up over the past. I'll say two years. It's been a lot longer than that. But in the past two years, it's Mm -hmm. been significantly worse than usual. And um, I just feel really passionately about creating a safe space for trans people Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. to, one, just create community, Mm -hmm. um, but two, take care of health and wellness needs like everybody else. You know, they have the same injuries that everybody else get from all of these different things. And um, it's really, really tough for them to go into general... Um, health and wellness spaces especially medical spaces and get the care that they deserve because a lot of times almost always they're going in and they're like my shoulder hurts and they're like 
it's because you're on hormones and you know they're not even taking into consideration all these other factors Mm -hmm. um so i'm really proud of that Mm -hmm. um but also just generally like we get a lot of feedback that they feel a lot of different people feel safe in our space a lot of neurodivergent folks just a lot of people who don't fit the general mold Mm -hmm. um and that's really what i want um Uh, people with disabilities are starting to come into the space with physical disabilities um that's been really cool as a physical therapist that's kind of what i do yeah um but it's really cool to feel and see that those folks feel safe coming into this space whereas Mm -hmm. you know they're not going into like a gold's gym or something like that Mm -hmm. um so yeah i mean community is by far the coolest and best thing that that we do oh i love it i'm all about community as well so i love what you're putting out there yeah um you mentioned the word, the phrase safe space a few times. Could you elaborate on what you mean exactly by safe space? This is such a good question, and I don't know that I totally can, but I'm going to try. Okay. Um, a safe space to me essentially means that there is a person, in this case me, um, mm-hmm. who is allowing the marginalized people in and being exclusive in the people that we exclude right so it's not only about being like we're accepting our our logo is rainbow like all of the things and Mm -hmm. if i come across somebody in my space who doesn't meet this criteria of of creating the safe space of being like i'm an ally i'm part of this community Mm -hmm. i send them elsewhere Mm -hmm. i'm like hey I know another great PT in the area. I think you'll have a great experience there. Here's another personal trainer. You know, like I I send them elsewhere. And I think that's the most important part of a safe space. And Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people have a hard time with that because, you know, I'm all about like this inclusive environment and I call it an inclusive environment. Mm -hmm. But to be inclusive to a marginalized population, Mm -hmm. you have to be exclusive to the people who make that space unsafe. Yeah, that makes Um, sense. And I think that's really hard, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, inclusivity should be about including everybody and all of these things. But what I've learned is that there are people who, one, aren't allies and who have very specific beliefs about my chosen family. Mm. Um, and two, don't understand why a space like this needs to exist. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you can't understand the need for this, you should probably go elsewhere, right? Like, yeah. I, I want to serve this community and, and our allies. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm not mm-hmm. saying I exclude all people who don't fall into my community, but mm-hmm. um, you have to be somewhat exclusive to truly create a safe space for a marginalized community. That makes sense. There's a certain amount of discernment. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Could you touch on some of the vocab for different gender identities? Oh my God, how much time do you have? Um, I have all the time. (laughs) I think I've probably thrown some of this vocabulary around already Mm -hmm. uh, in this podcast just because it's kind of second nature to me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the main differentiators that that I think all folks should be proficient with are cisgendered, non-binary, and transgender. Those are kind of broadly generally like the Mm -hmm. three kind of categories that a person can fall into and so a cisgender person is a person who was assigned female at birth Mm -hmm. and they identify as a woman Mm -hmm. today um so a cisgender woman for for folks outside of the queer community are probably all of the people that they know right like it's i it's unfortunately right now the default Mm -hmm. right um Mm -hmm. And so cis for short, C-I-S, so I think that's what I used earlier. Mm -hmm, Um, So mm -hmm. a cis woman is a person who was assigned female at birth and now Mm -hmm. still identifies as a woman. Mm -hmm. Um, A non-binary person kind of is this kind of middle ground. Um, They generally use they, them pronouns. I identify as a non-binary person, I use they, them pronouns. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's this idea, there's no real definition, right, because it's a spectrum, but it's this idea that we identify as all of the genders and none of the genders kind of fluidly like you know we don't really identify as a man we don't really identify as a woman and maybe sometimes we identify as both and you know so it's kind of this spectrum of like this gender spectrum this this idea that like we're all of it and none of it at the same time or maybe depending on the time of day well isn't gender a social construct i listen gender is a, absolutely a social construct yeah. and i think everybody kind of falls into this 
this gender spectrum um, more than we'd like to admit. Like, you know, growing up, how often did you hear that little girls are tomboys, right? Oh I think God. that's part of the gender yeah. spectrum too. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, and there's just so much within, like even if you look at the gay, gay men, right? There's mm-hmm. such a spectrum of gender just in, in the way that they present to the world there. And, yeah. um, and I think that's the fun of it, right? Yes. Like that's, yes. that's the fun of presenting to the world in all of these different ways is that mm-hmm. you can be anywhere on the spectrum throughout a day you can, it can change mm-hmm. right and, and that's why I think it's so fun but I think society has identified this spectrum and labeled it in a different way and what the queer community is saying is yes and mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. yeah we're saying yes and yeah. and yeah. so that's kind of the non-binary definite loose definition I guess is what we can call mm-hmm. it um mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to define and then the trans community um is if a person is assigned female at birth and then they transition either medically or socially um because they feel more masculine mm-hmm. um and there's a ton of variation in there too and we're I don't think we should get into all of the nuance of the all of the different yeah. gender yeah. things yeah. but that's essentially what it is is that um, if a person is assigned male at birth and they feel more feminine, they either medically or socially transition um, mm. to becoming more feminine. Um, and I think I do think it's important to note that a person doesn't have to medically transition to be considered a trans person. So medically transition meaning taking hormones or having surgery. Like mm-hmm. th- a person doesn't have to change the way that they look at all mm-hmm. to be considered trans. Yeah. Um, and I think that's an important distinction that maybe society as a whole doesn't totally understand like i think it's a lot yeah. easier to understand if a person is presented to you and they look like a man and they're like i'm a trans man and they're like yes you are that makes mm-hmm. sense to me you know i see yeah. um yeah you had top surgery like i get it right mm-hmm. and i think it's harder like if somebody who looked like me for example were to say i'm a trans man i think it would be a lot harder for people even though that's my experience and my identity mm-hmm. i think it's a lot harder for society to be like yes, I see you as a trans man. I'm going to use he, him pronouns, right? So, Mm. um, but I think it's an important distinction. And I say this all the time, but like when somebody tells you who they are, just believe them, Mm, right? Just believe them. Like, like nobody has been around me longer than me. And so like nobody can understand me better than me. And so like, if I come to you and I say like, Mm. Hey, I'm non-binary. My pronouns are they, them. Like, instead of being like, well, you look like a woman, you could just be like, that's really great. Like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you're on this journey or whatever it is. And, and that's kind of what I, I try to, that's like part of the education that I do is like, just believe me, you know, or just believe anybody, not just me. Yeah. Um, but for this example, me, um, but another example I use a lot is like mm-hmm. men with long hair, right? So okay. I'll be like, I'll be like, well, I've never met a man with long hair, so you must be a woman, uh, because in my experience, uh, right? But like, how ridiculous is it's that? It's ridiculous. But yeah, like, when but... you put it into the context uh-huh. of something that's more normal in society, or I've never met a man that wears a pink shirt, you must be a woman, mm-hmm. right? Like, just these things that that society perceives as more feminine. Um when you put it into that context, it's literally laughable, right? It's literally laughable. But if you put it into the context of queerness, Mm -hmm. all of a sudden people are like, wait, no, my, my perception of reality is the only true reality. And so Mm -hmm. there's this kind of disconnect, excuse me, disconnect there. Um, Mm -hmm. But yeah, so that's what I try to do is try to put it into terms of like general society be like, this is ridiculous. Like, yeah, it this is. This is ridiculous, right? Well, and I like how you're touching on it's about accepting and believing the person and not judging them. Yeah. You know? I think that's a big deal. Um, like, even I'm kind of new, my, and personally, I'm new to this, like, gender, queer, non binary kind of space. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's been, my life is inherently queer, right? Like I run a queer health and wellness center. Yeah, like yeah, my, yeah. I have two siblings. One of them is queer. Like my life is very, very queer. So uh-huh. for me, I've been really privileged in that I didn't really come out. Like people were just kind of like, I noticed you started going by Sid instead of Sydney. Do you want me to use different pronouns? And then it just yeah. kind of happened. Um, and I, I can totally acknowledge that privilege. But even in that, there are still people who are like, oh my god like pronouns are just so hard for me you know people get weird about pronouns people get weird about pronouns and 
um, my sibling actually made a really good point that I hadn't mm-hmm. considered. Uh-huh. Um, and they said, if you stop seeing the non-binary person as a woman, you will stop using she, her pronouns. Oh, that's a great and that. And it's yeah. something that I kind of hadn't considered before. And I know mm-hmm. it's a hard shift and I'm not asking mm-hmm. for it immediately, but it, like if you stop seeing me as a woman and start seeing me as a non-binary person it's so much e- like pronouns are then so simple yeah right? yeah it's yeah um well i feel bad i didn't ask you your pronouns before this interview oh shoot i feel bad i didn't say my pronouns well, I, I, I don't know if i um asked to like i don't know if i used the wrong pronouns i don't think no I you did. didn't no okay. you didn't no you didn't how do you identify i identify as a non-binary person uh-huh. um it's it's this really interesting But do you identify as queer? Oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I identify as queer. I'm married to a woman. Okay. Um, But I also don't identify as a lesbian, which is a really cool kind of shift in my sexuality. Um, I don't identify as a lesbian either. It's it's this really fun thing where um, I am, like, attracted to to trans mask people like Mm -hmm. i i really am and trans femme people if i'm being honest like Mm -hmm. i Mm -hmm. and so it's just been really fun for me to kind of explore that and um yeah like i guess tinker with my sexuality yeah yeah um and yeah it feels like i'm getting closer to like this is truly me in this moment Mm -hmm. i've been out for 10 years 11 years Mm -hmm. um and i've always just been very heartily like i am a lesbian Mm -hmm. you know and I played sports my whole life. I've been generally more mask presenting Mm -hmm. and um, it's just been fun to kind of not be that. Yeah. (laughs) I never liked the lesbian box. No pun intended. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. um, This podcast is great. Yeah. But because like, I felt like it was othering other people in the LGBT family. And I, I, when I say I'm queer, it's more inclusive and I feel connected to other gay, trans, uh, bisexual, pansexual. I feel more uh, connected to them. I, so this is something that has been very new for me, but Mm -hmm. I actually specifically have a hard time feeling comfortable in lesbian spaces. Um, because one, because I have found, and listen, this, this shouldn't be true of all lesbian spaces and probably isn't, but in my experience with the lesbian spaces that I've been to, Mm -hmm. They're like, oh my god, you're a butch lesbian, they, you know, you know, box. yes, and yep. and I and I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I'm kind of not that anymore, and and but the other thing too, and more importantly, is mm-hmm. is so all of the people that are near and dear to me mm-hmm. are trans people, mm-hmm. um, the people that work with me in my business, the people who are my best friends. Um, I have kind of dabbled in the trans identity a little bit, mm-hmm. um, and so it's just like a very near and dear thing to me, and they don't feel comfortable in those spaces because they, as they shouldn't, you know, they, you know, um, and, and that really, it's tough for me. It's tough for me to go into a queer space and feel like I can't bring the people who are closest to me and like maybe even myself sometimes. Oh yeah. Well, I feel like I've been judged in those spaces. Um, not all lesbians are judgmental at all, but there's been times where I've gone to, those spaces and I haven't felt like I fit, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't look gay enough. You know, I've been told like, Oh, are you sure? I'm like Yeah. That's it's... very judgmental. Um, I mean I was much younger then, but um, you know, I don't know. I just I, I've been kind of not welcomed. Also. Yeah, because you're what too femme presenting, right? Like because... you're you're saying yeah, and yeah. putting you in a box in a different exactly. box. Exactly. And so and I get it, like people want to put people in boxes so they can kind of make sense, but um, queer is so open ended, and I love queer. And it's evolving, and it's like you can be. I can wear, you know, masculine clothes one day, and then the next day look like a femme, you right. know. And it's not, yeah. I will say a quick plug: Eleanor's mm-hmm. Tea Party is my favorite. Um, my favorite queer meetup group. I've it's, never heard of this. It, they're fairly new, okay. but they, Eleanor's so Lizzie and Carly are the two creators of it. Okay. Um, and I'm forgetting both of their last names. Sorry, y'all. Um, okay. But they're the creators of it. They're very intentional about um, 
being a space for queer people uh-huh, um, uh-huh. and do a really, really good job. I love it. Um, oh. And so if you're ever looking, they're, they're, um, they're great okay. and super um, inclusive and go. make everybody feel super welcome. And, I love it. Um, um, yeah, but I, yeah, back to what you were saying, I mean, for me, mm-hmm. taking myself out of the box was actually one of the most liberating things I've ever done. Mm. Um, and I think it's hard because there's kind of like it was liberating and I feel like myself and like all of these things. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it's really scary because like for my whole life, I've Mm -hmm. had this community, right? Like I've been like, I can show up in lesbian spaces and feel super welcome and Mm -hmm. invited and all these things. Mm -hmm. And now all of a sudden I don't have this label and not that I've lost the community, but I certainly don't feel as part of it as I once did. Yeah. Um, and I even have issues like going to spaces like women in business, for example, is another one where I'm like, it's just hard. Like, it just feels hard for me because it doesn't like because I have the privilege of presenting like a woman yeah. still, like yeah. I have access to these spaces. It doesn't, it just doesn't feel true to me. I see. And I, I really struggle with that, mm. like almost like identity of, I have access to this space because of my privilege, but like, that's not actually like at the core of who I am. I would never describe myself that way. I see. You know? Yeah. So it's just kind of like this weird dichotomy. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for sharing all that. Yeah, uh, wow, we got it. I love it. I, I, knew, I knew it would go I'm there. I'm sorry, though. man. No, don't apologize. <laughs> um, let's see. Okay, what's something interesting about physical therapy that people may not be aware of? Mm, wow. Well, so what I get the most often is that people think PT is only for people who have people who have had surgery or old people. Oh. And like those are kind of the two mm-hmm. groups of people who go to PT. And uh, the really cool thing about the way that we run out wellness is that I'm a PT, but I also do personal training. And so there's this Ooh. idea that like phys- physically active people get off- get hurt more often, right? Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't be active. It just means you need to take a little bit better care of your body. Yeah. Um, but in this model, it's cool because I can say, hey, you got hurt either – you tweak something with me or out there Mm -hmm. still come let's deal with this but let's also keep working out and so pt is very um movement focused um that's Mm -hmm. a lot of what we do is like analyzing people's movements and getting them moving moving in the best way possible um and so pt is for everybody um it really is for folks who have these like nagging injuries it's for if you hurt your back yesterday um and it's also for people who just um, are maybe maybe have like physical limitations or like chronic illness or like some of these maybe um, factors that would make a general mm-hmm. personal trainer a little bit harder to work with. Okay. Um, a P- you could even go to a PT and get a general workout plan. I mean, we're, we're oh, trained in wonderful. all of that. Um, and yeah, I'm really proud of what I do. Um, I love what I do, that's but cool. that's probably the thing that I would say the most often is, is the feedback that I get. So a lot of yoga people, yoga teachers included, listen to this podcast. And um, hey, y'all. <laughs> I waved like I'm, I, I just know, waved. Oh, God, recorded. I'm such a freaking moron. You're being oh. <laughs> So those, those who are listening, she waved. Um, uh, gross. Uh, <laughs> um, not gross. Um, so there's a lot of hypermobility with yoga people. What? Um, we're just going off the script I love the it. script now. Yeah. What, what do you recommend for people who are hypermobile? Yeah, so I actually, I see a lot of folks with hypermobility, mm-hmm. um, whether it's postpartum hypermobility, Ehlers-Danlos hypermobility, oh. or just like general kind of folks who have looser joints. Yeah. Um, but I treat that a lot because there's a lot of overlap between the queer community and chronic illness. And so Ooh. the hy- hypermobility kind of falls into that a lot. Um, and so two things. One Getting strong is so important. Um, It's not going to be this Mm cure-all, but um, because the ligaments are more lax, um, your muscles are kind of the only thing creating stability there. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. But the most important thing with hypermobile folks is finding movement that feels good. And that can often be really hard. Um, And so I think having a lot of different ideas for these people to move is really important. Mm -hmm. And, like, literally whatever it is. Like, I've had folks where I'm like, 
Can you lay in your bed and pull your knees into your chest? Can you sit, uh, do like 10 sitting up and sit, standing and sitting into your chair? Like, like we can find the littlest movement because not only is it about um, their physical state, but it's also about their mental state. And so oh. as they start finding these movements that feel good, they're going to inherently be more willing to move. I see. Um, yeah. And so starting out, like meeting these people where they're at is the most important thing. Mm -hmm. And then as they start to feel better moving and they start to trust you, mm -hmm. um, then over time you can be like, hey, I really think this is going to work. And at that point, they're mm -hmm. going to be like, I trust you. You've led me in the right direction thus far. Cool. Let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so those by far are the two most important things um, with folks who are hypermobile. No, that's really helpful to yeah. hear that. Yeah. Movement that feels good. I know in uh, yoga and Pilates, people love to lock out those joints. And so I'm like, micro bend your elbows, micro bend your knees. And that, that really helps. Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh. Oh, <laughs> what is it like? Sorry, let me start over. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I was like, that's a good question. Neither of us read this script. I know, uh, I know. Like from the minute we wrote it, we're like, this looks good. And then this we just showed it. Yeah. Just it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting near to the end of our questions. Okay. What is it like working with individuals who have top surgery and bottom surgery? Mm. Um... I kind of say that everything is the coolest part of what I do, but I think this is the most meaningful thing um, mm. that I do. Um, folks don't have a lot of options. Um, and honestly, for top surgery, a lot of folks don't even know that they should or could go to PT after top surgery. Uh -huh. And um, just creating this space um, and working with gender affirming care centers here in town um, has been super meaningful. And we've seen some really great um, outcomes and quicker outcomes, which is which is awesome. But um, just being on this journey with these people and these people allowing me to be such a big part yeah. of this journey that they're on is, it just feels super meaningful and good. And mm -hmm. um, getting to see their progression through, like especially, I mean, using top surgery as an example, like they come to me, they can't move their arms past like their shoulder essentially oh. um and then by the end we're like doing push-ups you know and so it's just a really cool transition um from beginning to end bottom mm -hmm. surgery obviously takes a lot longer but similarly you know like what and not only have having me be on their journey but also just like watching their own transformation mm -hmm. as they are more affirmed and feel more like themselves and have gender euphoria is truly like the coolest mm. the coolest thing yeah. I, I don't hear the phrase gender euphoria enough what does that mean exactly so the opposite of gender euphoria is gender dysphoria which i'm sure you have heard yeah. um, so dysphoria um in the context of the trans community and the mm. non-binary community but mm. for right for right now the trans community um is when they basically look in the mirror and they're like I feel like me on the inside, but that does not look like me on the outside. I see. Um, and so that's why a lot of these folks will seek out gender affirming care. Um, and gender affirming care can be anything, right? So it can be um, hormones and surgery, but it could also be like starting to dress differently, cutting your hair, um, you know, um, working out and getting a bigger, smaller chest, you know, like, mm -hmm. like working out to try to build bulk in areas that would be more affirming to you. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things that can be. Um, true, but like as they start on this journey of gender affirming care, mm -hmm. um, they start to look in the mirror and see what they have known to be true on the inside all along. And so oh. when they when that starts to happen, that is gender euphoria. Euphoria. Yeah. Ah, cool. I did not know that phrase. Yeah. So thank you. Yeah. So where can people find you on the internet and in real life? Oh my God, such good questions. <laughs> um, so we are at outwellnessatx.com, outwellnessatx on Instagram as well. Um, and we are in South Central Austin, about three-ish miles south of the river. I don't want to be more specific than that because right now we're in the middle of a move. And yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. 
I don't want to say one thing and then the podcast airs and people are showing up yeah. to the wrong place. Yeah. Um, well, but, it's, time, it's a timeless, right? So, it, yeah, exactly. content. Exactly. Yeah. So, South Central Austin, we'll say. So, yeah. Um, so, we'll look on Instagram and see and, where you're And And that, that'll, have, that'll have all the info. Um, and I really like hearing from folks, too. You know, mm-hmm. um, I try to be as responsive as I can on Instagram DMs. Y'all can also find our phone number on there as well. Feel free to okay. shoot us a text there. I mean... Um, I like I like interacting with our community as mm-hmm. much as my schedule allows, and so mm-hmm. hearing from folks, um, especially like this has been my journey or something like that, is super meaningful. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, if y'all if y'all feel inclined to connect, please do. Um, oh, we love that. Yeah. So all that information is linked in the show notes. You are one click away from connecting with Sid Young what? and Out Wellness. Thank you, Sid, for being on the show. I really enjoyed having you. Thank you. If this episode resonated with you, please share yoga and podcast with just one friend who you know will love it. Another way you could help the show grow is to rate and review it. I'll even send you some podcast stickers with a love note. So after you rate and review the show, please drop me a message with your mailing address and I'll hook you up. Thank you for your support. We could not grow without you. And we have grown in the past four years. We have grown because of you. So you have my undying love. If you want to say hi, our email address is yogaandpodcast at gmail.com. The and is spelled out. Y-O-G-A-A-N-D podcast at gmail. Please follow us on Instagram at yogaandpodcast. We are on TikTok. The handle is also Yoga and Podcast. When you follow us, we follow right back on those platforms. Until next time, thank you for listening.